Hi guys, welcome back to a new video. Today we'll be looking into um, another um, recent pickup of mine. Uh, I'll say recent, it was, a, it was a little while ago now, but you might have seen it in other videos, maybe in the background, but I'm not too sure. But um, so yeah, so it'll be looking at a, another of uh, the utility or austerity pattern battle dresses. This one is was made in uh, Belfast in 1945. So it's a really, really nice example. So I really, really hope you enjoy. Let's get on with the video. Okay, now onto the main bit of the video. So what we have in front of us is an austerity or utility pattern battle dress. This one I picked up a short while ago. Uh, this one specifically was made in Belfast in 1945 um, and differs slightly as well to the other um, utility pattern I um, have as well. The one behind uh, from previous videos, you would like to go back and have a look at those, um, is one that was made in England. I think, I think it might have been Sheffield, but I double check. Might have been Derby, um, but that was made in 1944 <clears throat> in um, in England, uh, and there are the variations as you can probably see already from this one and that one. This one has a more open collar design in the way of where, where it does up at the top, and um, the other one has more of a in line with the buttons um, design. The pockets on the 1945 Belfast example are much, uh, I wouldn't say much, but slightly smaller. I would say maybe an inch or a half an inch or so all the way around are smaller in diameter in that than the other one. <clears throat> also I believe there's, there's a difference in the distance between the waist belt and the bottom of the pocket as well compared to the other one as well. <clears throat> but they're both lovely examples. This one is in slightly better condition in the way of like there are next to no moth holes on this at all. There are some very very minor ones on the other example but barely noticeable. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay so the example does include obviously insignia, as you can probably just see on the on the arms as well. I'll quickly spin that round so you can have a look quickly. Let's spin that round. So we have a uh, sergeant insignia, uh, rank stripes on both arms, and also the uh, um, qualification badge of marksman as well. So the skillet arms badge. So when whilst in training or also whilst with the regiment as well during um, when you go down to the ranges, depending on what you achieved uh, on certain um, uh, certain degrees of training, etc. It depended really on the range and what you were doing that day really. And also it depended on the ammunition you were uh, you were um, given as well, but generally. So that would denote marksman, you see there. I'll get some close-up shots as well at the end of the video for you to have a look at it as well. So to turn it back to the front. So just like the other one, uh, the other example I have, um, on the utility pattern or austerity pattern, uh, buttons are exposed um, to save on material. That is the case on the main uh, uh, doing up point of the blouse and also the pockets and other areas such as the cuffs as well. Uh, just like the pattern before it, the which was should be really known as the 1940 pattern, um, is the top of buckle. <clears throat> this is um, a thread through buckle, but it has teeth in uh, within the clasping point there to lock the uh, uh, strapping belt in place, so it doesn't um, slip or move free um, whilst wearing it. Which was the case on the uh, battle dress surge, which was the original um, uh, battle dress for this period, which has very very different characteristics to this. So, um, um, uh, covered buttons, uh, unlined collar, and some other things, and obviously the buckle's different as well. <clears throat> okay, so I'll spin it round uh, to, the, to the back, so you can have a look from the back. So, if you just see, we have a single seam down the back, um, where the uh, back dress was sewn together, for the main bit. The uh, back part of the waist belt. Um, see so two button holes, which was which differed. Obviously, you've probably seen the other one as well, which differed from the um, other two previous patterns of battle dress, um, which had three buttons. So these two where they are now, and obviously one in the centre. But this changed obviously to save material and save time and things like that. But it secures just as well. Um, it was still you could still wear these with the previous pattern of uh, battle dress trousers, um, but generally it was better to wear them with the ones going with it which had two button, buttons to accommodate with the two holes. Okay, so that's 
and then part of the battery itself. Um, as I explained in previous videos, videos obviously, whilst where whilst sort of would have this, he would have certain documents and that on his possession. Generally, in these two pockets here, noticeably a pay book, uh, possibly a wallet, depending, um, and other items such as to that degree. Uh, if, for example, um, guys serving in the Northwest Theatre, late to war, were generally, um, especially if they landed well, well within the uh, sort of early period of the Normandy invasion, would generally have a French um, phrase and customs book. So, uh, blue cover with France and the Arc de Triumph on the front would pr probably be one of the items you'll probably find in the pockets on the, uh, on the battle dress. Okay, so I'll quickly pause here and we'll get it down onto the, uh, onto the bed here and um, I'll show you the inside. So here we have the battle dress in front of us, um, laid down on the bed. Um, as you can see, what I've explained before with the previous part, um, with the uh, exposed buttons, with the button holes, etc. And the insignia on the arms. So I'll just open it up here. So we can see the lining. Um, obviously the lining is very, very similar to that of the previous pattern. But of the first pattern, the battle dress surge. Uh, the, there are a few differences. Mainly that of the lined collar, as you can see at the top there. Which was not a feature of the first pattern of battle dress. So okay, quickly stop here and then we'll have a look at the label. So now we can see the label just inside. As it reads, battle dress, blouse, or blouses, 1940 pattern. Um, obviously this is slight difference to what I was saying, obviously, but basically it's the utility pattern of that year. Very, very came very, very late in the year and was not really seen, as I explained before, until um, uh, a year or two later. Um, and then late, as the war went on, more and more, became, and it became more prevalent then. So but just below that, so the size, so that's size number 16, and the height, and the breast size, waist, and then the company that made it so Bullford Clothing Company Limited, Belfast, 1945, and I believe that's the issue date of March 1945, and then the broad arrow just below that. So I really, really hope you enjoyed that uh, video. Um, if you like to support the channel, please subscribe, like and comment as well. It really, really helps the channel. Um, really appreciate it. Um, hopefully soon I will be having a new video. Um, uh, well, hopefully, well, hopefully soon. I always say that. Um, with Kevin again, who you saw in the previous video, when we had a, um, a, a Skype chat for about a couple of hours or so, so that was really good. Hopefully we'll be doing a new video, um, sort of joined uh, together um, on some of the kit we've got for the uh, Monty's Men trip. Um, I will be focusing a bit more on that as the year goes on, um, and as we're going to next year, because I'll be doing um, the Monty's Men trip next year, as this year was cancelled due to COVID-19. So, <clears throat> I'm really, really looking forward to that. I'm gradually building up my kit for that because it needs a lot of uh, focus on the minor, the small details uh, and really getting it finite um, and uh, and as accurate as I can. So that's been that's a bit of a challenge in itself and I'm helping Kevin as well because um, he's basically started new into this hobby. Um, but um, he, he recently done um, an event with uh, the Suffolks actually so, um, so that looked that really, really, really good. Um, so, and first into the reenacting sort of sphere, as it be. But um, he's done uh, most of the 18th century before, so um, as I think he mentions in the previous video as well. So, but he's sort of first time doing Model Two reenacting as it is, really. But yeah. So aside from that, I really, really hope you enjoyed. Um, hopefully that video will be not too long um, coming up. Um, between then and then and now. Um, I might um, maybe get some other small content out as well. Um, I've got a few books that I, I want to uh, look into a bit more and I'll do some reviews on here like I had done before. Um, and also with some, on the minor small bits, maybe I'll do a small kit video as well in regards to what's in my haversack mainly um, as well, which, I'll be, which hopefully I'll, well, I will be using for the Montezuma trip anyway. So, as I say again, hope you enjoyed for the third time. Um, so yeah, so I'll see you soon. Bye.